It's two years out, but it's coming up fast. She'll be district governor, one of 529 throughout the world for Rotary International. Who is she? You'll meet her coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're the Myrtle Beach Herald. We're focused on the Little River Chamber of Commerce and Rotary International. And we're visiting with Mary Martin, the Executive Director of the Little River Chamber of Commerce and the District Governor-elect. Yes. District Governor-elect of, of Rotary, which is tremendous. Yes, it is. That's a big deal, Mary. It's going to put a lot of pressure on you. You're going to be traveling to a lot of Rotary is, clubs. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And you all have pretty serious requirements about attendance, right? Yes, we do. What are you going to do about, like, your home chapter? Oh, my home club won't have to worry. I'll have more makeups than they'll need. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Oh, you will have to get into the makeup uh, right. the deal in a little bit. But real quick about yourself. Were you originally from the area? I was originally born in Ory County, yes. Is that right? And I, then I left when I was 15 and always wanted to come back to the beach area to live, but didn't really have the opportunity until 1995 and the job that I had in Florence ended and it gave me a perfect chance to come to the beach area. That's fascinating. Yes. And when you sat down, I was trying to figure out your accent. I thought maybe you were British. <laughs> For a second, I was trying to figure that accent out. Now, but now as you're talking directly, I could tell it's not British and you've got a good bit of ORE in you. Yes, I do. You were here until age 15. Yes. What prompted the, the departure from the area? Family move? Family move. And um, I got married real young Ooh, yeah. and left. My husband was in the military and we traveled around until 1970 and he died. Oh, no. And at that time, I got real serious about my life and about a career and went back to school and to on to get a master's degree. And then I started to work professionally as a human resources manager. Wow, that's yeah. tremendous. Back, you went to, back to college in 1970. Yes. Son of a gun. Did you have family at the time? Or, uh, I, I mean, had obviously the, your husband two had, children. You yes. had two children then. Yes. Boy, that was a big deal. What about mom going to college? I know. Yeah. It, was, it was real funny because I was um, a freshman in college. My daughter was a senior in high school, my son a junior. Oh, come on. Yeah. And then they'd see me uh, studying so Cramming. hard and, and they were having fun. And I was thinking, someday you'll understand why I'm working so hard. Yeah, but that's right. it was interesting. They'd see you cramming for classes. Yes. How exciting, Mary. That must have been thrilling. And now, did your d daughter eventually head into college right yes, after? Yes, yeah. she did. And then your son? Uh, yes. So they were, uh, y'all were in school at the same time? Exactly. Oh, golly. Yeah, it was fun. That's amazing. Yeah. Do y'all talk about that to this day? I mean, I'm sure there must be some great stories yeah. about that. Yeah, well, see, when their dad died, they were 14 and 15 years old, and it was um, it was real funny. We became closer by my, my going back to school mm -hmm. because I was going to school with kids their age. Yeah. And then I had to sort of adjust to what the kids were saying and doing at that right. time, right. and it, it made us closer. Now, I assume you weren't living on campus. No, I was not. <laughs> you weren't in the dorm rooms. <laughs> no. So you had a little different than most of the freshmen right. who, uh, who headed off to school. Did your, do you mind me asking, did your children, did they go in and live in the dorms? or did? Uh, or My daughter actually did. She did. My yeah. son li did not live on campus. He liked being with Mama. That's mm -hmm. great. That's great. Mm -hmm. good, good son there. Good yeah. thinking. <laughs> yeah. That probably caused a little angst between your son and daughter right. there. Yeah, yeah. One. Well, that's exciting, Mary. Mm -hmm. do, do you mind, where were you all living at that time? In Fayetteville, North Carolina. Okay, great, good. Yeah. And your husband had been in the Army, you said? Right. Okay, mm -hmm. Fort Bragg has a right. big institution up there. How mm -hmm. long did you stay in the Fayetteville area? I was there 10 years. Uh huh. And I loved it. A lot of people always say bad things about Fayetteville, North Carolina, but I loved it. It was uh, a nice place to live. And, and home is what you make it anyway. Okay. It doesn't matter where you are. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. When did you end up in Florence? I went to Florence in 1982. Okay. Took a job with um, Haynes Hosiery, yeah. Sara Lee, and sure. Legs. We made the Legs pantyhose. 
Yeah. Absolutely. Now, was that on the location between Florence and Marion there on 501, or was there a different? There was a different one. Okay. It was out on TV Road near Channel 13. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Got to know where that is. And, of course, that's in. Did you say you later worked for the city, or you worked? No. Okay. You just stayed there before uh, coming to the beach? Yes. Uh -huh. That's exciting. What originally got you involved with Rotary? In 1988, women had never been allowed to be in Rotary, and really? some lady out in California sued the Rotary Club because they wouldn't admit her. Yeah. And she won the battle, and then women were admitted into Rotary. So another uh, female and I were in, inducted the same day in Florence, in mm -hmm. the Florence West Rotary Club. And, and that was in 1988. and. Uh, I've been a Rotarian ever since. What is it about Rotary that's so exciting? I mean, what's the mission? The of mission of Rotary is to promote peace and understanding among nations. And they're really unique in the way that they do that. We have programs that uh, we invite teams from our area to go to another country. For instance, this, this year, we had a team that went to India. Mm. And then uh, the India team came here for a visit. And they actually go for five weeks. They live in homes of Rotarians. Only one of that team is a Rotarian, and that's mm. the leader. And then they have five, ro five non-Rotarians that go to these other countries. Mm -hmm. And they live in homes of Rotarians from week to week. So mm -hmm. they travel from one area to the other. Wow. And then when we reciprocate, we bring them back here and they, they actually will come here for a week to the Myrtle Beach area. Traditionally, they go to Hilton Head, Charleston, Columbia, and Florence. Mm -hmm. But from year to year, it, it varies. But we bring those people to our homes and they learn our way of they doing stay things, in they homes. stay in my home. Great. In Florence, I had a lady from Egypt that was a, a pediatric allergist. And it was amazing because she had never spent the night in anyone's home. Really? In Egypt, a girl is never allowed to spend the night in anybody's home. So Other when she, yeah, so when she came here, she was in her 30s. And I was nervous because I didn't know what to expect, yeah, and she sure. was nervous. But we hit it off. We uh, communicate to this day. But she was just interested in knowing everything about our country and how we operated. She went to church with me. She's a Muslim. Mm -hmm. I was told, don't invite her to church. And on Sunday morning, she came out, and she said, I want to go to church with you if you go. Good for her. So we went to the Methodist church in Florence. and. She, we got back to my house and she said, your minister says the same thing that mine says. Mm. But we really got, we talked the entire week other than when we slept and when she was mm. out on tours of businesses. And that's what we do, we bring them to our country. And when they get to Myrtle Beach, they go on tour of the city of Myrtle Beach or the city of North Myrtle Beach, right. the candy factory up, Knopf's Candy Factory. Right any of the business areas that we can get them into, the Coastal Carolina University, sure. or Tech to look at the golf program or mm -hmm. the kit, uh, cooking classes, whatever we can mm -hmm. get them in so that they learn as much about our country as they can. And when they live in our homes, they have a different view of us when they leave. Mm. And they never forget that. So when, they, when they go home, they remember everything about us. We had an exchange student that came to us from uh, France two years ago, and this is a high school student. They, when they got here, they wanted to know, why, why do you all have the flag everywhere? I, and it was shortly after 9-11, right, sure. and we were real patriotic oh, yeah. at that time. But they couldn't understand why we were so patriotic. Mm. And when he left here, he was standing up giving the pledge just like we were. Wow. So it really, it, it's a wonderful organization when we work on the local level, we do things in our community. For instance, every child in Horry County that's in the third grade gets a dictionary. Is that right? Provided by Rotary provided, International? Provided by the, the clubs in, in our area. Wow. And while we think a 
a dollar dictionary is not important. There are a lot of children in this area that don't have a book in their home. Yeah, yeah. So we do, we do that program. We do uh, other programs in our communities. We raise money, but we turn around and give it away. Our Rotary Club has probably given over $100,000 in scholarships to students from the North Myrtle Beach High School. Mm. And 100,000? Over 100,000. And, and that's just my club. Other clubs in this area are doing basically the same thing. They mm. have scholarships. The Surfside Rotary Club built a hum Habitat for Humanity House. Mm -hmm. The members of that club did that mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. two or three years ago. But we're all involved in different uh, projects throughout mm -hmm. Horry County. And then when you look at, at the county, then we belong to a district. Mm -hmm. And our district is the eastern half of, of South Carolina. Mm -hmm. It goes from like Dillon, Sherrill, up to Columbia, and then down to Hilton Head. Right. And in our district, we have 77 clubs and approximately 5,000 members. Tremendous. And when you look at, uh, I, I can't do it by myself. I can't promote Rotary that much. But if you look at, if we have a project, we work together to raise the money to give away in our communities. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a, a fabulous organization. In fact, in 87, Rotary decided they wanted to do something to alleviate polio mm. worldwide. And polio. Polio. And Rotary is celebrating their 100th anniversary this year. Mm -hmm. And we are going to be making an announcement to the world that it's practically eradicated. There are still two or three little towns in India that are very hard to get to. Mm -hmm. uh, Rotarians are interesting in that if we went to another country to give the polio vaccine to children, mm -hmm. those people in that country will let a Rotarian in. Mm. A minister they might not let in. So mm -hmm. Rotarians can get into countries and into places that ordinary people can't get into mm -hmm. just for the fact that they're with Rotary International and they're well, so well known. Those are great words, Mary. You know, it's fascinating whether it's on the local level or in that right. instance as a national representative. Of course, Rotary International obviously covering mul multiple countries, multiple religions, and surely multiple, uh, multiple groups of people. It's right. amazing. You know, on the local level, one of the columnists in the Herald last week, Steve Porter, was writing about how emotional he was attending the police officer of the year and the firefighter of the year, mm -hmm. those two ceremonies, mm -hmm. and to hear him go through the emotions of the uh, the families that were there involved with their spouses right. receiving those awards. And the recognition, I think this was the first year, the firefighter of the year, of course, the police officer of the year has been recognized mm -hmm. a number of mm -hmm. times, but this may or may not have been the first right. year of the firefighter, but it was a big deal for him writing mm -hmm. about it. That's tremendous. Well, I think we all have different programs that make an impact in our communities. And, and that's what makes it so special because I might think that something I do in my club is great, but then there's another club that's right. doing something different. Mm -hmm. There's another club, the Little River Club is brand new. It's less than three years old. And they collected books last year and gave to the Seacoast Medical Center to have in the emergency room so that people that go into the emergency oh, room, great, if it's, if you were, taken in there and you had a child with you, they'd get a book so that they can read that book while they're in there and take it home with them. Great, thank you. And it's simple little things that yeah. you don't think that much about, but it does make a big difference in our communities. Glad you mentioned Little River, Mary. We got a segue just for a minute in the Little River Chamber of Commerce, and I really want to focus on Rotary International and your uh, district governor-elect position coming up in 2000, two, 2007, 2008, which means right. I assume you're going to be traveling around to those 77 clubs on a decent or regular basis. Little River Chamber of Commerce, a lot going on up there. A couple yes. of weeks ago, the very successful Blue Crab Festival. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think you said you've got a big shrimp and something festival coming up in October. We have a big shrimp and jazz festival. Great. It's going to be our first one. Is that right? And we're in the planning stages right now, but it's going to be October 8th and 9th. Great. On the waterfront in Little River. We're going to try to make it a more upscale um, event right. with the arts and crafts, and we would like to get some children's authors, which was interesting here in Jill. Jill, yesterday, uh, yes. Yesterday, uh, 
talking about that, I think that I can contact her and maybe get some leads. Sure. We'd like to get some authors to come in and read oh, to the yeah. children. Yeah, it's a great idea. We, and maybe sign books. We want to do something different for the jazz which festival. Is, which is a great idea. I think I saw at the Blue Crab Festival you had some of those Sun News reporters and columns. So I'm sorry right. the Herald wasn't contacted, yes. but hopefully next year be an opportunity. But I was excited to see Johanna and Emma Rich and some mm -hmm. others at mm -hmm. the Blue Crab Festival, right. which is a great way to get out and really make an yes. impact. Yeah. Uh, really it's make a great little impact, community yeah. and uh, it's, it's really nice to have that function there. It's fun and people come from all over the world oh, yeah, for that yeah. festival. What I am surprised. Blue crab? And what's the deal? I see you've got uh, some representative <laughs> blue there in your shirt and your earrings and that uh, piece yeah. around your neck. What, 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 what? I don't see a blue crab, do I? And have you have ever eaten blue crabs? You know, I haven't been to Little River in a little while, Mary. You, it's you pretty crazy to, this weekend. You need to it's call hectic. me yeah. this summer, and and we'll meet at one of the waterfront restaurants and order some blue crabs. Well, I'm going to have we'll to eat. take you up on that. Okay. That's a great idea. It'll be fun. That's a great idea. Yes. Well, but the real focus there. I mean, this was the. I mean, it's, it's been going on a heck of a long time. Twenty-four years. Twenty-four. Year. Twenty-fifth mm -hmm. coming up next year. Right. Y'all are beginning to plan it right now. Right. I'm sure they are. Yep working on it right now. Mm -hmm. This is one of the many events the Little River Chamber helps co-sponsor. I guess there's some other groups that help put that on, or are you all the soul? There's another group that actually puts the Blue Crab Festival on. Right. We help, Right. and we're involved in it, but they actually put that Downtown merchants on. or otherwise, mm -hmm. sure, mm -hmm. sure. And the steak and, or the shrimp and jazz, it'll be y'all's first. It'll be our first. How exciting. What are some other things the Chamber's involved in, and how long have you been the executive director? Since July of last year. Oh, really? So not even a, yes, a month right. yet. Mm -hmm. I mean, not even a year, a year yet. A Excuse year. me. Yeah. Right. Yes. Um, it's it's an interesting uh, job. We have a business after hours every month, and as you know, those rotate from one Look. company to right. another. Whoever sure. wants to sponsor one. Yeah. And then I had somebody come up today and said, "I want to have another one," and I said, "I'm booked." Full. Yeah. For so a while. we'll have to do an, a special event for you, <laughs> but we can do that. And and we're small yet. We have 225 members, Is that right? and so we are a smaller chamber, and we can do things for our membership sure. that maybe the Myrtle Beach Chamber or the North Myrtle Beach couldn't do right. because of their size. Oh yeah. Uh, I've even heard that they even have to sign contracts that they're doing a business after hours to make sure that everything's uh, taken care of and. In Little River, we don't do that yet. We can right. not yet. It's yeah, I'm sure y'all are continuing to grow, and obviously with yes. huge events like the Blue Crab Festival a couple of weeks ago and other events, right? Y'all will uh, continue to grow. We're trying to do a lot for our members too. We have a website, and anyone that joins our chamber, their website has a direct link from ours to theirs. Right. And we get hits on that website all the time. It's a great little website, and uh, then our materials that we produce they look like the website so everything is right. good that's um, littleriverchamber.org yes it okay. is littleriverchamber.org right. and it's it's um it's really nice to see that coming together for our membership as i said we have the business after hours i list them uh any way that i can in our right. newsletter right. i try to highlight whatever i can when we have the business after hours, I give them a chance to talk about, if they're new, to talk about their business, tell us what they do. And also, any member that's at the business after hours can tell us what they're doing that might be new and different. Right. So that we can recognize them and people can know what they're doing. Great. You'll also have a phone number. It's at the 843-249-6604 number. That's correct. For folks to learn more about upcoming activities as right. well as some of those business after hours, as well as I assume about chamber membership opportunities. Right. Yes. You've got members, I'm sure, from outside of the area. I Maybe do. not a lot, but it's still great to continue to grow that. It was fascinating to hear Brad Dean with us a couple of weeks ago talk about members from all over that want mm -hmm. to be a part of a chamber because they want that area to grow. Right. Exactly. They want it to grow. And, and Little River's growing like crazy right now. I'm amazed every time I drive down the street because you will see a different building mm -hmm. or something being moved. Mm. And it's amazing. And then all these little communities that are popping up everywhere. Yeah. It's exciting. That is exciting. Except for the fact that when more communities and more people, you've got more traffic on the roads. Yeah. 
you have more traffic on the waterways. So there's safety issues that I'm, we're always concerned I'm about. I'm sure those are in the county council members or otherwise are cognizant of that and truly yes. thinking that through. Mm -hmm. and the local merchants and otherwise probably help either promote or help stabilize right. that at some level. Mm -hmm. And speaking of excitement, big excitement now for this area, Horry County, to have the district governor elect coming out of this area and, of course, to be traveling. we got about five minutes, so I want to highlight some of the activities that will go on in that regard. But what what do you think made you even pursue to take on this opportunity? Because this is a heck of a lot of work, Mary. I mean, it, work in a service it, sense, obviously. It is a lot of work. Yeah. I, I love Rotary, and I love what it stands for. Mm -hmm. I became a Rotarian by choice through the Florence West Rotary Club. Right. And the other lady that joined the same day that oh, I yeah. did, she and I decided to go to Mexico City to a Rotary International Conference. Wow. We're both single. We said, let's go see what it's all about. Yeah. So we fly down to Mexico City, and if you can imagine being in a, an arena with 30,000 people, mm. and you're sitting there, and then they start the program, and they introduce all the countries in the world that have Rotarians, and the flags actually come out across the stage. I got oh. the biggest goosebumps oh, yeah. I've ever had in my life, and I thought, God, I'm a part of something that big. I can't believe it. Yeah. But when you really go to an international conference and you see people from all over the world dressed in their native costumes mm -hmm. and you, you realize how big it really is and what Rotary does for the world to make it a better place to live. And that's a key word when you think about the world. You'll be one of 529 district governors throughout the world. Yes. Throughout yes. the world, yes. that that must give you goosebumps. It does. It thinking does. Thinking about that, it and, really does. And when that American flag came up in Mexico City, I'm sure that was almost a tear jerk it to is. think about it that. Is. What's that friend of yours doing now? Uh, the one who joined with you back in '88. She's still in Florence, and she's she? actually going to be the president of her club this no. year. It's yeah. funny because somebody said to her, Melinda, why? Did it take you so long to become a president? And she yeah. said, well, I just wasn't ready for it. Right. But uh, she'll make a great president, I'm sure. I'm sure. But when you, th when you think about that many district governors, and there will be a one week of intense training that I have to go to in California. Right. I've, I've been told that you have a certain spot to sit in every day, and if you are five minutes late, they send you back to your district. So you learn to be on time. Mm. Of course, I always am. I try to be anyway. Sure. But um, I think it's a fabulous opportunity for me. It's going to be a lot of hard work, and I will have to visit all of those 77 clubs in mm. the year that I'm district governor. I'm hoping by then we might have two or three more clubs. Mm. But I'll have to visit them, and it's going to be a lot of work, but I think it's something that I'm up for, and. I feel it's a great challenge, but it's it's more of a humbling experience for me to have been selected. Have you gotten your kids involved with Rotary International? No, I keep trying. Oh, come on. My yeah. granddaughter, Maybe they can start up a new chapter. I know. My granddaughter is thinking about going out on a youth exchange next year for three weeks. We do have two programs with youth where we'll send them out to go to high school for a year. Right or we can send them out for three weeks and they go to another country and the three week program is they go to that country, they live in a home Great. with Rotarians and a child her age. And then when she comes back, that child comes back to, to the United States with her and she'll stay here for three weeks. Mm -hmm. So that's a good program for her to, to experience to begin with. And if she decides later she wants to go for a year and go to high school, that can work. Mm. But we also have ambassadorial scholarships that I want to talk about for a second. We give seven or eight scholarships on a district level a year, mm -hmm. and those scholarships are worth $25,000. So if you're a junior in college and you have inspirations of going to another country to study mm -hmm. to get a master's degree, you ought to really think about contacting somebody that's a Rotarian and applying. Great. because that's a wonderful scholarship and we have some cultural scholarships where people that want to learn to speak another language can go to another country for three months in the summer 
and those scholarships are worth $12,000. Now, could a viewer call you at the Little River Chamber to learn more about Rotary International other activities if they... Yes, uh, if they okay. wanted to, yes. Not but to it, cut you off, but we got less than a minute. Yes, I just wanted okay. to make sure yes, folks could call you about mm -hmm. that. Yes, I could. That's wonderful. I didn't mean to cut you off. I just I wanted no, to make sure great. we had an opportunity as you look back over the involvement since 1988. It's almost uh, two decades now. Uh, not quite, of course, but the experiences for you, Mary, what's been the most exciting? Just going to international conferences and, and learning more about Rotary and what it's mm -hmm. doing worldwide. That's great. It's very exciting. Congratulations. Thank Thanks you. so much for being with us this morning. Thank you. Very definitely. Stay tuned to more Carolina people with Mary Martin coming up next. Think about those two big years. Let's focus on those 1990 and 1995. Of course, 1988 her first involvement with Rotary International. That same year, the woman in California opened the door for others to join Rotary International, other women to join Rotary International. And the experiences in 1990 for two single ladies flying down to Mexico City, the opportunity to be down there and experience seeing all those flags raised on the stage, to know one of those flags, an American flag, but also to know so many countries represented we heard Mary talk about that in 2007, 2008, to represent this area, 77 plus chapters, the opportunities of one of 529 governors worldwide. That's throughout the world. Rotary International, it's so special. But think about that year, 1995, that pediatric allergist traveling over from Egypt, never been in someone else's home. The experiences for her as a Muslim attending a church with Mary on a Sunday, the opportunities of recognizing differences, traveling around to area business, to know this group study exchange is a real opportunity, not only for Rotary International, but for all the folks associated with Rotary International. Think about that woman returning to Egypt to talk to her patients, to talk to others, and to know what it's like about little things going on in houses outside of her own. It's an important experience. Rotary, Inter Rotary International's open those doors the Little River Chamber of Commerce is also opening a lot of doors. Give them a call or go online to littleriverchamber.org to learn more.